Your approval of the agenda. I so move to approve as presented. Second. Motion made and second approve the agenda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion for the minutes for March 7th. Approval of the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve March 7 minutes as read and presented. Motion made and second to approve the minutes from March 3, 7, 7, March 7, 23 minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Public comment. Nothing? Okay. I'm supervisors not seated on the committee here. See that either. Hey. Update from the Administrator Netherlands. Yeah, thank you. I only have a couple of things here, but uh, first of all, congrats and thank you for your efforts in our priority setting exercise. We had 100% turnout. Uh, thank also to Bob, Don, and Carrie. Uh, they they said it was a great exercise. We have a lot of good information that they are uh organizing and <coughs> analyzing and you we will be getting into a deep discussion on that at our april board meeting uh, but apparently they got some very good information i think it's going to help us uh do some good things over the next three years um also for this committee too just you probably have maybe seen the press release the industrial park news which is good for economic Development Milltown has received a grant. Right. Uh, they have a, a company there that's expanding and hiring people. And so they're going to blow out part of that area to make it a bigger industrial park. And Amory, of course, has just opened up their new industrial park as well. So those are all good signs uh, pointing to uh, good, good movement, good things here in the county. Um, I will mention this uh, Friday is Good Friday and the, and the county building is closed. So offices will be closed. Uh, of course, our highway department, our sheriff's department, and some in our other areas like community services will still be working, I'm sure. But uh, the office is closed then. Uh, in case you guys wondering too, I was really happy. Don forwarded message and also agreed with me. We get our monthly distributions on sales tax. We're up 9% over the first quarter of the year over last year. Really? Yeah. yeah. It, it, last year. Yes, it does bounce up and down. Yeah. And there's no guarantee that we're going to uh, finish ahead or where we even project. But but uh, we do monitor this on a monthly basis. It helps, especially in a year like this, when uh, you know we've had some added expenses with uh, the weather conditions. I would guess a lot of that is through our new trail system. You know, the, the people North, that I North know, when we were always just a pass-through county now, I, I think it was this huge this year, the amount that. Uh, yeah. And I, I would credit a portion of it to my wife and her purchasing through Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's all I have. That helps the relationship. <laughs> Thanks, Vince. Uh, update from County Commissioner Norby. Good everyone. Um, Couple updates on projects. First in your handouts is the one for State Highway 65. They did have a public information uh, meeting on this on March 27th down at the Garfield Town Hall. There's about 55 people there. A um, lot of questions on the project. This project's gonna start approximately uh, May 15th down there. On the back side, you'll see a map on there. There's always um, asking on what areas are gonna be reconstructed. Those three circles down there, the first 90 at the county line and just up um, where that last fatality was, those hills right there, those are the only areas of reconstruct in this project. Um, the rest of the project will be a two inch mill and 3.75 inches of asphalt going back in with two foot paved shoulders. So that project will take uh, part this summer along with that. So that'll be closed. Once it goes, they're gonna close the entire stretch for the, um, for the summer. Um, with that, um, also closing is County Road K, west of 65 for the bridge replacement sometime this summer. 
I don't have a, con uh, a date on that yet, nor do I have a date on County Road B up in Atlas for that closure and that bridge replacement. The government center project, um, since the government center is gonna be closed on this Friday, we are scheduled for a power shutdown on that day. Um, Rod staff and uh, Market and Johnson, they'll be shutting down the power to the building for approximately a day and a half. They are bringing in a backup generator to ensure that we have um, life safety uh, things still operating for us um, because we're still waiting on the generator to come in, the life switch safety gear, uh, some of the uh, switch gear, the switch gears here, but the um, circuit breakers are not. We have temporary ones coming in for that one. So that we're getting those in. So that's coming um, today. So we'll have some more work done on that one. Justice Center roof project. The pre-com meeting is April 14th at the Justice Center, 10 a.m. That project is 65 working days. Uh, Rod's been working with uh, Don Burroughs and we're getting staging areas over there for that project. So that'll be starting um, very soon. Uh, next, um, do you have that up, Claire? Uh, the Recycling Center project. Um, figured I'd update you on this. This project is going very well and on schedule. Right there's a rendering of what it's gonna be. Uh, with the expansion, you can see the front side of the building here that's looking towards Walmart with the two large doors. There is a man door going in there on the latest rendition of that. So that is um, moving along right now with permitting. We're about 90% done with drawings. Uh, next slide. If you look here, you can see the old building is here. The add-on to the tipping floor is here, add-on to the office and the um, garage area in the back. This drive through area is new. That's the safety factor for the public. Take into effect that now the public won't be coming in where the big trucks are dumping off recyclables. They'll come around here, stop at the office if they need to, come back here with their waste oil, electronics, and that, and then leave the facility without coming in contact with the trucks. So that is on schedule right now. Right now, we're scheduled to go out for bids May 15th. Open bids for construction on June 13th. Um, and start construction soon afterwards this fall. Um, hopefully by August, we'll be doing construction on that. We're doing the permitting now. Um, it's a 12 month project. Staff is now working with uh, um, Republic and Waste Management. We're getting bids now to accommodate when we can't bring recycling into this facility and sort it, we need to get rid of it. So we're just working on that end of it right now as we go through the process. Mosley, where's our drive in for the uh, full shed there? Set the up in this corner back up here. The main entrance is here still in the same location. The scales are yep. practically right yep. here. Thank you. Yep. Uh, the next one, Plant Falls Dam. Uh, we talked about that last month and how the prices are fluctuating. So I put together some information for you on how, where we started from now. This is the Clam Fall flowage in the upper uh, left hand corner there, you see County Road I at the top of the flowage. That's where the dam is currently. Those are parameters on that. Um, next slide. What we'll be looking at is uh, projected uh, cost starting out, our needs and wants, and our options of going on either the north side or the south side and where we landed. Next slide. So we started out with the grant process going off the 2017 report. And <coughs> with that, they go for an estimated cost. With that, it's assumptions, they're unknown. How deep is the sediments? You know, how big is the down to bedrock? Um, what are the DNR needs for the spillway? And that that cost, we estimated it was $2.2 million, and that's what we applied for the grant for our cost share on the grant. Next slide. So our first thought was go on the south side of County Road I. That would relieve the water off the bridge under, under County Road I. A labyrinth design would be low maintenance for staff. The water would just spill up on storms. Um, if the sediment was six feet deep or less, this was our option. Price came in at about 3.1 million on this estimate. But we needed more uh, exploration done because the sediment was deeper than six feet, they found. So next slide. That came to the crest gate design on the south side. It still had no gates. It, looked, it kept it on the south side of the road, better for the bridge. 
We had to bring in a barge and do soil borings to see how much it was to bedrock. This estimate came in at $7 million. That was just a little out of the, the realm. That was a little too high. So went back to look at other options. Next slide. Came back to the original side on the north side of County Road I and a tainter gate option. The tainter gate is that large area right there. One big large gate to open and close to do the um, waterway and the spillway. Uh, still manual. We still have to fill in the old uh, electrical side of the house here that has asbestos in it. Um, with that, it has a large contingency of 715,000. And this came in at uh, $4.6 million. So what are our options here? One is to look at a different style gate. Next slide. Another option is to build one huge spillway on the north side of the gate with a dam. But what that does is lower the, the flowage four to five feet. What you're left with then is just the pink area with a maximum depth of the flowage of only seven feet, which isn't much water anymore. So we didn't want to go that because our grants are for repair. So the next option we went to was a slide gate option. The slide gate option is similar to what we have now, a little better in uh, operations. We still have to monitor it naturally, but this came in at 3.88 million, 3.9 million. A little more obtainable. And what does that mean for us now? Next slide. So going through all these scenarios and what we have to go through, the challenges are during the course from 2017 to now, DNR adopted using NOAA Atlas 14 flow data for spillway reports. This has this increased the rain totals, increases the spillway, increases the cost. The powerhouse um, abandonment, can we fill it with gravel? Do we have to do it with... Um, Global uh, concrete, sediment. The sediment was started out at six feet. We drilled, it showed it was at 17 feet. Got to go back to the other side of County Road I now. Removal of the structure in uh, back in 17 was like three quarters of a million dollars. Now it was estimated at two to $3 million. So a lot of challenges in this project. Next slide. So where do we land with the money with uh, the slide gate opportunity? Uh, we have two million earmarked grant from the state from our legislative body. The next million dollars is a 50-50 grant, 500 from the county, 500 from DNR. The next two million dollars is 25%. Now, a, a, a new one that came in is the North American Wetland Conservation Act. Uh, a couple of years ago, DNR asked the county to have us use this project of the dam as leverage to try to get some funding through this program. So we assigned 1.5 million of this project as a conservation project. And what it did, it, DNR got the grant from the feds. And with that, um, DNR had a project drop off their scope. So they're offering us another $250,000 towards this project to help us out. We can use that now. So on a $4.6 million dam, we have $3 million, a little over $3 million in grants that include the NACA funding. 1.5 million is um, county funds. This number here, the 750 we already budgeted, the 574 was the escrow from the Northwest Electric when we took the dam over. If we use that money, we have 1.3, we're short $188,000. With the slide gate option at $3.9 million, it works out to be $2.9 million in grant funding, including the NACA funds, and then $887.5 million in county funds, which we're currently funded for. So we have that funding in place. Um, those numbers change a little bit for grant funding because of the 25% match on the next $2 million increases that and decreases that a little bit. So we do sit there and that, that's where we sit right now. Next slide. So that's kind of the way the project sits. You know, when we saw the $7 million, we were really worried about funding and how this is gonna move forward. But looking at the options we have right now, we are covered financially um, with the repair of the dam. It is on schedule right now to be uh, 
gone out for bids the end of the summer and award this fall, which would mean it's a 12 month project approximately to get this done complete. In turn, we could do a winter drawdown this winter to help with the milfoil that's in the flowage and start construction next spring with those numbers. So the project is on track uh, the way it's going right now. A lot better than the last time we were here. Yeah, we've had a lot of discussions with the engineers and options and what we could do to um, kind of rein this back in. And again, that 3.9 does have the 20% contingency in it. So it is still got a lot in there. You know, our comfort level, you know, that's pretty high. That's a pretty high contingency. You know, we could lower that down to a 10%. We built the government center, I believe it was a 3% contingency during the government center project. So. So just to bring you that news that we are tracking where we're supposed to be and we're on schedule of, of both those projects. So what's the, uh, what's the, now that in what you're talking about, the 3.9 million, that's the slide gate. Yes. Which is effectively design wise, it's similar to what's currently there. It's, it's currently what's there with the exception of the size and width of the extra spillway next to it to accommodate the 500 year flood. So what, what do we give up um, by having to go to this design compared to what we'd originally envisioned for being there? Well, we give up both the Tainer gate and uh, going on back on the north side of the road. We give up the ability to design a structure that would be um, maintenance free of people checking the flow if it goes high or low, okay. if we had a rain coming in. So total cost, there, it's gonna be more labor intensive over the life of the- Right. It will have a monitoring system on it, electric monitoring system that we don't have to physically drive up there all the time to look at it. Um, the new uh, spillway itself will accommodate more flow that it's not as reactive as the current dam is, uh, which will help us to, to eliminate those features push that cost of that $7 million to get on the south side of the bank. Right. Yeah. I like the fact that we really do have some control on here, even if it is manual. It's because everything is automatic. That isn't saying it always works in your best interest. No, and this would, this will have a, a better system than we currently have. I mean, currently we just have a block and tackle. I mean, literally you just chain the gates up and close and kind of watch it. This will be a little better operation on that side. Just one question. I, I'm not a dam expert, so I'm just saying what I've heard in the past. And they wouldn't let the straight river draw down in the winter because of protecting all these reptiles and everything along in the banks, and they would be frozen. So I'm just telling you that if my memory says that's what the Indian are. They have <clears throat> which I know you know more than I do. They, they have to okay the drawdown. Yep, yeah, we've been in contact with them for the drawdown as kind of a joint effort so <laughs> we can tackle the, uh, the milfoil issue. It has to be drawn down for a certain level in the wintertime to kill that off. Um, and that would help versus having two drawdowns to one to construct the new dam um, and then the second one to eradicate the milfoil. So we kind of do it at one time. And one more question. The narrow spot that you're building this, where is the bypass going to be while you're drawing down and you're building the new dam? For uh, the, the spillway, it'll be just to the west through County Road I. They'll build another uh, coffer dam structure to go around on the west side. Mr. Chair, yeah. you know, I'm the far farther away from that as I can get, you know, from the county, the county line. And I'm just amazed about somehow, you know, well, even at our last meeting, we talked about uh, the increase and in, I'm amazed at the number of comments of people that, that really were worried that we weren't going to do things or do the right things. And it's, people have still got such a bad taste from the uh, Woodley said that was such a treasure to Polk County. 
least anybody that's been here for a while, they, they don't want to see another tragedy like that. And I've, I've heard nothing but good comments about go ahead and get things done. And I think that's a good thing. There is tremendous support, I think. I haven't hardly heard anything negative. Everybody just do what you got to do. Else, <clears throat> at least you have Kim there to monitor your seven hundred thousand contingency every month. <laughs> Anything else, Mo? No, that's it. We did reach out um, and gave offers to three highway maintenance workers that accepted. Hopefully, we'll start Monday and a parts in, uh, inventory control specialist. So we're working to fill positions on those. Still have two open uh, highway maintenance workers and a mechanic that we have no applications for. Have we had good applications in your judgment? Uh, we had four openings and three applied. They were they were all good candidates this time around. We had a pretty good pool on that one. Still searching for seasonals. We so far have interviewed one. We need four. Farmington had a meeting last night for a new maintenance person. Two candidates that are really amazing, which surprised us. It's a different world. <laughs> sure is. I mean, we have 150 to 250 applicants for a single job. It's different. Yeah, it's uh, really I will different. say hats off to the division directors and, and HR. Our, we always hear the, the challenges, but we're actually having su success of late in getting candidates to apply for and fill open positions. We'll be presenting more information to other committees and the board about the progress. So we're making progress on that. Mr. Mike. There you go. <laughs> okay. Anything else? That's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Mosley. <laughs> Here for what? Share. Thank you. Still a two the fatalities. Yep. Don't want to even talk about it. Don't want to jinx it. Started off with a bad year on fatalities. Um, I look forward to hearing what the priorities were. I haven't heard anything yet, so I look forward to the April meeting, and hopefully we can pull our heads. And if we can help any way in achieving those priorities, we're we're certainly willing to work with all of you. Um, we have, uh, through emergency management, we got a regional active shooter grant. I'm kind of excited about that. We're going to be able to host a regional training and get some money to spend on that training and some equipment for, um, you know, combating the threat of an active shooter. So I'm excited about that. That's kind of a trend, unfortunately, that we see. So we want to certainly be prepared and on the cutting edge when it comes to an active shooter. Uh, training is kind of kind of unique right now. This is the time of year we do a lot of training. I just participated. We have a simulator right now over at the sheriff's office for for uh, use of force and and shooting, and it's all computer generated. Where you basically shoot a laser beam at a screen, and it's it's it gives you different law enforcement scenarios. So all of our employees are going through that right now. Um, additionally, the jail is doing their regular trainings. So it's kind of a nice time of year to see all of us involved in our training. As you know, each deputy has to do 24 hours minimum per year of training. And we work really hard to keep everybody, and, and not just training, but good training. We wanna make sure that we get our people uh, trained to the best, best of our abilities. We just finished probably the longest snowmobile season you can possibly have. So I'm excited that it was a good year for our new rec officer. Um, he's had a, a, we've had a good presence out on the trail. 
And I, I'm happy to report that our trails have been very safe this year. Uh, just a few minor incidents with, with accidents. So that's positive. When we look around, there's been some, obviously some fatalities in neighboring counties, but we knock on wood did very well with snowmobiling this year. Um, we did have a serious snowmobile crash out on Balsam Lake. Um, very serious. It, it involved a, a plow furrow that a snowmobile struck. And, and you know, the plow banks right now, snow banks are very hard. So with that, um, I handed out just some drug numbers for January, February. You know, we're part of a drug task force and we keep track of the numbers we have there. And, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of fun just to see the trends. We actually track what day of the week we see the most activity. And for January, it was on a Tuesday. And then for February, it was actually on a Thursday. And it's kind of interesting. And, and, and that just allows us to sometimes focus where we want to do the enforcement. My theory on it is the weekend they're partying, they're not trafficking the drugs. They traffic it during the week so that they can party on the weekends type stuff. That would just be kind of my interpretation of that data. Uh, with the breakdown for January, we had nine felony arrests and seven misdemeanors for substance for drugs. And then for February, we had 13 felonies and four misdemeanors. And this is kind of our doldrums, you know, January, February are kind of the, the slower time of year for us. So I expect we'll see a big increase. We also do have a canine that's in training right now. And when he comes out and hits the ground running, we're probably gonna see a lot of felony drug arrests. Um, really excited about that. I think we're gonna have a really busy summer for combating narcotics trafficking through Polk County. Otherwise, that's all I got for you this this time. Is there any questions? I got a I got a question. I had an inquiry on the Stour Trail, and I think it you probably got a report of some kind in your office. But it's a nice way of saying a complaint, I guess. But uh, she had indicated that the trails were closed. There was a snowmobile on the trail. She was hiking, and. Uh, they were speeding, according to her, and she called the sheriff's department and was told that you don't have enforcement authority at that time on, on that type of a complaint and to refer to the DNR. And she contacted them and didn't get any response, period. Hmm. So uh, I guess I don't. Believe me, I understand the uh, <clears throat> very limited amount of what the complaint was about, I suppose. But uh, do you have a response to, about the you versus DNR enforcement of some of these uh, violations, if there so, was a violation? Yeah, I won't comment on the DNR because I really don't have any knowledge on what they're staffing and that is. But I can tell you that anytime there's a complaint, we have somebody on to handle it. Now, if every car was busy at something, that would be a low priority complaint. So if we had a staff issue or everybody was tied up at a family fight or a crash or something like that, perhaps we wouldn't have somebody available and we would try to get the DNR involved. But ultimately, we're on, we're on back to back years of the Stower Trail. And there's been a few complaints of similar things. But overall, the trail has been overly remarkably safe. And I think that was always the concern with the legality of that trail was, is it a safe trail? And I think undoubtedly it proves after two seasons, the trail is extremely safe. And we're always are gonna have complaints. I don't, you know, throughout the whole winter, we get similar complaints countywide about, are the trails open or closed? You know, typically um, we do have somebody to enforce that. And we usually do have somebody on to respond to complaints like that. So we can certainly look into that. I know we did receive an email recently about some stower complaints, but again, they're minor in nature. And I, I hang the hat on the fact we've had two good years of snowmobiling and, and no serious crashes or serious incidents. Right. Well, I wonder what area this was in because I've been going from, from Osseo to Amory every day on the snow. Well, and, oh, and I've been watching if there's been any tracks on the, on the stower and I've been watching for that every day. I thought somebody's going to take a shortcut or something. Well, I haven't haven't seen any from Dresser to Amory. I haven't seen any tracks on the, 
a few deer tracks. I wonder just what area that was in. The area was. Uh, was it in the city of Amory? No, or? no, no, no. It was over. I think it was east of Deronda. Yeah. And there's, I've had several complaints and statements and opinions about that from generally it's somebody that that lives there and they don't like the noise right uh, and, and again it's been a long season so they've it hasn't been a two-week season where they're only going to hear this there's been three full months of snowmobiling so right. um the, the fact is um I, I always like to remind people uh locomotives used to roll through there yeah. so hearing some snowmobiles off and on i mean i grew up next to railroad tracks our house used to shake when a train went by Sure. Um, so I think in the scope of the world, the trail has been very successful. And I think people are oftentimes looking for certain things to complain about on it. But I, I hang my hat on the fact that the safety record on the trail is great. And, and I hope that continues. And that's a testament to the work the clubs do, the clubs do on maintaining and grooming and keeping the trail well marked and smooth. They did a fantastic job. Yeah. I think the whole thing is and, it, and it's had to have been exhausting to to groom snowmobile trails for three straight months. So I applaud the efforts that the clubs have done. Right. I do too. Yeah, yeah. very definitely. Well, <clears throat> have they taken that house down out there, that cabin? No, it's just for <clears throat> that would be a perfect place for you to do some practice, by the way. Gavin sits out there just off the trail by itself. You could close the trail on each end and sure. do an exercise in there if you wanted to. I mean, it's a perfect place. Sure. You, you can do all the shooting you probably wanted there and nobody <laughs> care. You know, I mean, it's just an idea. Yep. I mean, if you want a, a building that you can practice breach on or whatever you're going to do, I mean, sure. Absolutely. Just an idea. Yeah. We'll reach out to. Rod and Mo on that. So are you full on deputies right now? Uh, we're, we're one short on deputies due to retirement, but we're in the process of working on filling that. Um, we're going to be one short in dispatch. We had a recent, somebody submitted a resignation. Also with the you jail. That you're working a lot of overtime. Well, it's it's been difficult. You know, that's that's that's, again, we're, we're a 24 seven operation. So like I, I hear good Friday, the county's closing. That really has no impact on our services. We're, we're there yeah. 365 days a week. An applicant so, for both so. Well, we're posting for the dispatch position. We hope to get a lot of applicants. Obviously we hope we get good quality applicants. Um, there you. is a next month, there's a career skills fair at the Polk County Fairgrounds. And I think there's like a dozen school districts they rotate through there. And we have a presence at that. We set up a booth and we bring our shiniest, newest equipment that we have to display and try to entice these school kids to look at a career in, in the emergency services, whether it's our, our directions, our dispatch, or the patrol division. So it's a good opportunity, at least. All right, thank you. Supervisor Rowdy, you're up. Uh, quick update on ATV's UTV snowmobile. Excellent meeting today. I thought covered some real good projects. And right now it's in the transition of the, of the council because you're working on machines from last year to the long winter. And then you're starting to work on to get, make sure all of your summer equipment is ready for the ATV UTV six in summer. And in the discussion, they mentioned I might know no help. We have a fuel cost on the diesel running the tractors of seventy thousand plus spent in Polk County. It was a ton of money. And the maintenance on those tractors through uh, John Deere ran 50,000 plus. So they spent a lot of money with their project, with the snowmobile project. Is that basically on six units? Uh, yes. Six units, yeah, that's my thought, yeah. So that's, it's a, it's a big operation to keep everything going. Yeah. And now uh, 
uh, Rod is working on it. Mike, they're going to sign the Gandhi, so they're all uniform signs, and that it'll it turns out to be a big cost project, but it's 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 important. And they're going out as soon as tomorrow morning to do some signage to to count the signs to see what they need. So it's a never-ending project, I think, with all this. So it's wonderful. By the way, just as a side note, you Rick McGuigan's on your <clears throat> one of your active members, and he got a, he resigned from the town. Uh, he's been a town supervisor for ten years, and he got town presented him with a nice plaque last night. So that's good. Congratulate him when you see him. Nice. He's a hardworking oh. member. And very talented. He yeah. worked all those years as an implement mechanic, and he was—he's going to stay on that uh, that board on the uh, on mining right outside of Osceola. They got that. Well, I think it's up to. I think they bought the Mellon place in about three three hundred acres of mining, and uh, he's on that mining. Board. Sunday switch places in the farming community. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, I have, sir. Thank you. Who's going to be the CJCC update today? Sir, I could provide that. I think Melissa is uh, conducting an interview right now. So if it's all right. I'll just uh, provide her report. You go right ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, some numbers updates. Uh, as I think you're aware, there are four diversion programs that are associated with the CJCC. In treatment court, we currently have 10 enrollees. IDIP, which is intoxicated driver program, uh, we've got 11. Uh, substance diversion, which is essentially meth diversion. You saw the sheriff's numbers on methamphetamines in the county and arrests. We currently have three. Uh, the sort of modal number in that has been zero for quite a long time until uh, the last three months. So that's great. And in first time offender, we have two. So that's a total of 2426 folks in some sort of diversion program here in the county. A couple of other updates. Uh, if you have some time uh, on Friday, the 14th of April, we would love to have you come to the treatment court graduation. We have two folks that are gonna be leaving treatment court and getting on with the rest of their lives. If you've been to one of these, they're really great. It's wonderful to see uh, people making progress and also being the next generation of leaders uh, for folks who've gone through this program. The last thing I'll mention, if you're so inclined and the snow cooperates, that is to say, there's no snow on the ground, there's gonna be a highway cleanup day on uh, Saturday, April 15th. And if anyone would like to join in that, that's treatment court participants that are uh, picking a highway to clean up and others will be involved as well. That incidentally was organized by a treatment court. We have uh, one opening in uh, treatment court right now for a diversion case manager. My understanding is it will be uh, interviewing qualified candidates uh, this week and next. So hopefully we'll get that in that position. Happy to answer any questions. Uh, what time is that? Uh, That's a great question, sir. <laughs> We can't control the judiciary. Uh, uh, treatment court itself starts at nine. Generally speaking, it's done by 10. Uh, sometimes, depending on the number of people that are in the court and uh, what the judge feels like saying and the number of folks in the audience that want to speak, that court proceeding can go well past uh, 10 o'clock. But generally speaking, we try to get over to the celebration room sometime between 10 and 10.30. Uh, really, the most interesting part is the court session that starts at nine. So if you have enough time, come at nine o'clock. Uh, if you can't come till 10, that's great. If you don't see us, look for, look for us in the courtroom or in the community room. Thanks very much. Any other questions? Okay, so now we get a discussion, possible action regarding resolution 16-23. Whom our administrator is going to talk to us about that. Or do you know what was that? Yeah, the 1623. <laughs> I could address that. Yeah. And then I think the sheriff and Don Burroughs might want to say something. 
so what we have in front of us is a, a, a budget amendment to support the acquisition of some hardware and some software. Uh, total uh, amounts about $293,000, roughly $30,000 of software, the balance of two sixty three dollars is for hardware. We applied for a grant. We didn't anticipate getting this grant. We were thinking about it back during the budget cycle. Uh, 72 counties in Wisconsin, I think Don, correct me here, there was a handful of grants available. We weren't certain we'd have any chance at all. Lo and behold, the folks writing the grants must do a great job because the grant came through. So this is the sort of situation where the state ponies up 80% and we have to come up with 20. That's where that $293,000 comes from. Um, we would be doing this anyway, so this is a way to get a large portion of this project subsidized. Um, the reason you didn't see it back in October and November is we were pretty sure we wouldn't get it. So now we've got it and we're asking you to authorize us to spend this money, which we would, as I mentioned before, spend anyway, sooner or later. And the 293,000 is the 20%? That's correct, sir. So it's a million, what's the total? The total cost is around 400,000. The state just kicking in about 50%. We're adding um, software maintenance, which is almost 100,000 on top of our, our match or 20% match. So that's why it came up with <coughs> three. Plus the GIS component, which is about 30 grand to get that upgraded as well. This project just upgrades our 911 systems, allows to better track 911 calls, calls for voice and video 911 calls as well. So something that the state is going to require upgrading here in the next four to five years. So by getting on board now, we're, we're getting ahead of the game. Um, it is a competitive grant, and if we waited down the road, I don't know that we'd get the matching funds. I think part of that, the cost of catch up on that type of stuff is is a lot worse than biting the bullet when it when it's available. You know, keeping keeping up to date on that equipment. There's, we've had some bad experiences over the years with technical equipment and we kind of put it off, put it off, and pretty soon we got a pile of money to pay out by mandates. One motion. So uh, the COVID funds that were turn, turned into the general, they're part of the general fund now, right? I mean, they're not designated. Right, they are part of the general fund. We do have some accounting responsibility to the, the feds that we report that we've spent all that money. But as you know, we've got several projects ongoing, you know, including, you know, like the roof at the Justice Center. We could assign those funds with no problem to many different projects. Okay, so it's not going to be an issue in 24. No, the way. Okay. You want to entertain a motion? Today? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, approve this uh, project as written in uh, resolution 1623 and uh, move it on to the county board for approval. Okay, motion made and second to forward resolution 1623 to the county board. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I think this is just a common sense uh, message. Uh, anybody got anything to add to the work plan then? What's the, what's the update on our uh, emergency? Man post, I got a bit in. Um, it came in. Well, within our range that we're looking at upgrading while I was there, um, it was offered to us by Medica, another machine, another motorhome type machine. 
So we're exploring that option as well, right? They want to, Medica wants to donate a 2008 diesel pusher that's been barely used to see if maybe that might be what we want as a So it's a work in progress. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping to get things wrapped up by next month. And thank you, thank you. Thank you. You're the man on that, that's for sure. <laughs> on the work plan, I see in July we have the jail tour, but I've been informed that that's the 4th of July holiday. So I don't know if we want to discuss. I think we moved that around from month to month. my calendar up here so we can look at it yes. yeah so it falls right on independence day uh, how about june well june is usually the time that we have june is the eighth or the sixth i mean you usually do it in june okay the june meeting uh may have to be moved also it's the same week as Rose School. Well, oh. So maybe we should uh, think about putting uh, highway on the 8th of June and on the 6th of, because some of us will already be here. 6th of July? Yeah, we'll be here for executive committee. Okay, yeah, I was gonna see Starts what at 8.30, I mean, so, and lately it goes to, 1230. <laughs> yeah, depending upon where we are. Yeah, where we things. are with it. <laughs> yeah. If we change both meetings to the same day as executive committee, I mean. Yeah, as long as they're not going to overlap, you should be fine. Yeah, when we just say it has to be over to, you know. So. That's okay with everybody. I think we'll go ahead and do that. Sounds yeah. like a plan. Near the boss. You got that down? Okay. Yeah. All right. We don't have an executive. Yeah, we don't have an exec on July 6. Huh? We don't have an exec on July 6. Is it the following? The, that's the, the executive meeting will be on the 13th. So the 6th, we should be open. Okay. If you want to do it then and have it at the two o'clock time. Except that's road school. Yeah. You're still in road school. So you're talking the sixth of July. No, July. Oh, July. Sorry. I thought you said July sixth. Yeah, that. That would be okay. It's just moving it from Tuesday to Thursday. Yeah, that's fine. Why don't we have executive on that day? It's the thirteenth. It's usually the second. Second. Thursday in the month. Yeah. Second okay. Thursday. So June 8th is okay. Am I getting this right or June 8th? <laughs> not for the not for the jail tour. Get a real calendar. I thought they wanted it on the 13th. Is that what you said? June 8th is That's open exactly for the that. highway meeting. It doesn't conflict with any other meeting. Yeah. So June, June 8th, 8th is executive because that's the second Thursday. Yeah. So June 8th would be highway. Only that day and the eight, uh, the sixth is clean then too for the jail tour. <clears throat> Until uh, the in July. Okay. Yeah. Correction. Yes. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Yep. Yeah. Could we have the meeting at noon so that I can serve you the? And yeah, we normally do that. We do it at noon yeah. usually and have so, it over at the at the yeah. community room. No. Mm -hmm. So the 6th at noon, where we'll have our meeting then. Well, if you've got that all sorted out, I'd make a motion to adjourn. Second. Made and second to adjourn, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't think anybody would argue with that one. No.